think is a bore. Let's find out uh, another viewpoint. Anthony McCartney is a bioethicist from the Society of uh, for the Protection of Unborn Children. He joins me now. Uh, Anthony, very good morning to you. Morning, Anthony. Morning. So what do you make of this story? Do you think that it is a good idea that doctors are investigating the science that could remove hereditary diseases? Well, I think uh, the whole... Uh, move is uh, fraught with certain ethical problems and some of them are practical and some of them uh, relate to the value of human life. So the way this has been done, the latest kinds of experiments, is through the production of a large number of embryos uh, from usually people with sperm which has, who have certain genetic diseases themselves and they are then um, experimented on or something is injected to them at the fertilization stage to try and uh, remove certain genetic problems, so-called uh, gene editing. Now, I mean, first of all, that does involve the production and destruction of uh, uh, very large numbers of human embryos. Now, these are early human beings. Um, they have parents. You know, any IVF parents will know that they feel a bond with these kinds of embryos. So in order to get the experiments going, so, there is sorry, that sorry, problem. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. There is yeah. a difference between an unfertilized and a fertilized embryo, is there not? Well, I mean, uh, um, an embryo comes into existence at the point of fertilization. But we're not talking about uh, eggs here. We're talking about um, a new embryo that is uh, that has come into being, that's been created. But, Anthony, uh, these embryos were not allowed to survive more than five days. Well, that's what I mean. They were destroyed at five After days. After five days, yeah. So they are created and then destroyed. So that's the, mm. that, 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 so, so that's one area of ethical concern. The other um, is, and I think you touched on it uh, just now, uh, possible implications of this kind of thing. Now, what we're talking about is actually affecting, you know, the genes in the DNA in a way that will be passed on to generation to generation to generation. This is the germline. Now, that's a massive thing. We're not just talking about something affecting one person. We're talking about something uh, affecting possibly countless generations. So if something goes wrong uh, or there's a, uh, you know, a, a slight change or something doesn't work, and we've already seen this in China where things haven't worked, so not all the uh, DNA has been affected by the, the change, and that's led to real problems. Uh, that could carry on for generation, generation, generation. But science so, is about experimenting, isn't it? And what, what they're saying that this can do is to eradicate diseases like some cancers, like haemophilia, like diabetes. Surely we have to, we have to take a chance on that and try and make that happen. Well, uh, I suppose that, that, that depends. I mean, first of all, is it ethical in the first place? But secondly, uh, not necessarily, no. I mean, if, if the risks are so high and you're not going to be able to change things through generations, and it opens up all sorts of very worrying possibilities about control of, uh, you know, future generations' uh, abilities, genetic enhancement, and stuff like that, then I think you have to find different ways. The problem is you might be removing the whole framework in which we understand uh, uh, medical progress because you're actually... Uh, allowing for the very DNA structure that we rely on to make ethical judgments to uh, be, as it were, uh, thrown out of the window or edited away. So there are very real concerns. Um, just because somebody says, well, we're hoping to do something good, um, you know, isn't enough when we make uh, ethical judgments in science. So what are, you, what are you saying that the bad things are that could happen? What, what could happen that was well, bad, I, well, in your opinion? First of all, there are extremely serious safety concerns, which very many scientists and other people are, are concerned about. If something goes wrong, mm -hmm. okay... What do you mean, uh, if you something are, goes wrong? Well, you try and edit a gene, and you end up with, uh, you know, uh, called mosaicism is one of the things, but you end up with a very corrupted uh, result, as it were, or you end up with something that can't be detected at this stage, and then that passes on through generations. You have, you have now introduced into uh, uh, the germline something that affects 
countless, you know. But 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 if you take but if you take this view, if you take this view, then you're never going to do anything. You're never going to look at any medical science. There is always a risk of any kind of medical uh, science or or any experiment. There is always a risk that something could go wrong. If you are not prepared to take risks, then you are never mm -hmm. going to tackle uh, the diseases that either impair people's lives or indeed kill them off. Well, I suppose it depends upon the nature of the risks. I mean, there are certain things that are uh, of su such kinds of risk, and I would say this is one of them, that you should never take that risk. I mean, there's all sorts of things you would never take a certain risk on, because it would be... You, but you say immoral never, immoral and what risk. we're dealing with, though, here is opinion, that you're saying that there are some things that people shouldn't take risk with. There are other people who would say, look, if you have an embryo and it is destroyed after five, five days, but you can do yeah. uh, a significant amount of, of testing and work with that, uh, the, the impact upon human life is so minimal, de minimis, uh, that they would say that that is something that is, is worth taking for the benefit of the human race. Well, OK, uh, there's two separate questions there. Uh, one of them is, is, is it wrong to destroy or, or, you know, produce human life in this way and then destroy it? Uh, now, many, many legislatures, including this country, did not allow uh, the doing of that. You know, uh, um, you know, embryos can't just be created for experimentation and then destroyed. But, Anthony, so we, test, are, uh, we test drugs on people all the time. Sometimes they don't have a beneficial effect. Sometimes they do. Unless you try, you're never going to find out. Well, OK, but as I say, there's, there's two questions. Is the way in which you're trying actually destructive of early human life uh, doesn't respect the dignity of life? If, if that's a yes, and if you think that there's a serious problem with that, that rules it out. Secondly, if the nature of the risk is such that you might be affecting future generations and opening the way to certain kinds of genetic enhancement, which are, have clear moral problems in terms of manipulation of other persons, etc., then it seems to me you have the kind of risk that should that you should say well well no this is not the way we should approach this and you know and all of my, my central point was simply that there are all sorts of things that we don't do precisely because the risks are so serious uh, and i would say that this falls into that category anthony mccartney bioethicist Thanks. from the society of uh, the Un uh, protection of unborn children thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, this morning on Thanks, talk anthony. radio thank